Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. May not come when you call him, but he's right on time. Thank you, Jesus. May not come when you think you need him, but he's right on time. Thank you, Jesus. May not come when you're in that situation. Yes. Right on time. Sometimes you're running from the devil, and the devil's on your back. You can feel the heat on your back. God, where are you? But he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time.
Amen. The resurrection. The resurrection. And as we look at the resurrection, there's a few points that we want to hold true to a resurrection. And the first, the most foremost and important point about a resurrection is that there must be a death. Wow. There must be a death. The living are not resurrected. In order to be resurrected, you must die. In order to experience a resurrection, you must die. Death means separated from the life source or separated from a life source. That's death. With death, there is an irreversible. See, this is what death is all about. It's, it's no longer able to come back. It's an irreversible time of life being stopped. That's death. Mm -hmm. Because if they can revive you or resuscitate you, you haven't died. Mm. Death is not the same as being in a dormant state. Mm. It's not the same as being in a sleep state. With death, it's irreversible. Yes. And, and, and as we look at what God wants us to see on today, death being irreversible, meaning when God brings something to the point of death, his mind or idea is when it comes back to life, resurrection, is not going to be that way again. Um, irreversible. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Natural death is irreversible. Mm -hmm. Spiritual death is irreversible. Mm -hmm. God says, I'm going to resurrect, and when I resurrect, it's no more going back to that life. No more mm -hmm. going back to that idea. Mm -hmm. No more going back to that mindset. No more going back mm -hmm. to that belief. No more going back to that old dream. No more going back to that old hope. A resurrection. Resurrection means to bring to life. The resurrection. And um, another most important aspect of a resurrection is how you die. Mm. Take your time. How you die. The state of your heart when you die. The state of your mind when you die. And I want to say on this afternoon that a resurrect, a death is not always the physical body. A death can be in a circumstance. Amen. A death can occur in your situation. Mm -hmm. A death can occur in a hope that you had. Mm -hmm. A death can occur in a dream that you had. A death can occur in certain aspects of your life where your physical body is still alive, but you have died mm -hmm. in a certain aspect. And God says, I take people through a certain death because I want to resurrect them to a certain life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to be willing to die if you want to live the life that I want to bring you to. But how do you die? How did you die to that situation? How did you die to that circle? Did you die with Christ in your heart? Did you die trusting God? Did you die standing on faith because God says, I'm bringing you to a death in order to bring you to a resurrection? Amen. There's something I have for you that you can't do in the state that you're in. Even if you are a believer, God says, I even take my believers through stages of death. Mm -hmm. Your physical body is still here, but I'm taking you through a stage of death because it's a part of you that needs to die. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. a, an irreversible death. Because God says, when I bring you up that new man, when I bring you up to that new place in your ministry, I don't want you to go back to the old mm -hmm. way you Jesus. did it. Jesus. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the resurrection. But today I want to deal with resurrection in circumstances. But I want to show, even in that same process holds, how you die determines how you will be resurrected. God sends us through certain situations and circumstances because God says, I, in order for me to resurrect you, in order for me to bring you to the new, I have to kill you. <laughs> I have to kill your situation. I have to kill your thought pattern. I have to kill your mindset. Yes. I have to kill the way you feel about things. I have to kill the way you do things. Mm -hmm. You, you, you. Notice how I'm saying that. Yes. yes. I have to take you through a state of death, yes. and when I resurrect you, death being irreversible, my plan is you don't go back to that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now you're the new person. You're the new man. You have a new understanding of who I am and what your purpose is in life. The resurrection. We all want to be resurrected, but nobody wants to die. Mm. We all want to be made new in Christ Jesus, but nobody wants to die. We all want to carry the word of God and preach the word of God, but nobody wants to die. We want to hold a title. I want to be a minister. I want to be a pastor. I want to be a bishop. I want to be an apostle, but I don't want to die. But God says in order for me to pull you to that position, I have to resurrect you. And the only way to resurrect you is to kill you. You have to die. 
Amen. You have to go through. Amen. Death is not pleasant. Death don't feel good. Amen. Death is a lonely place yes. sometimes. Yes. Death is a dark, cold place sometimes. Sometimes mm. death, you're separated. Mm. You're around people, but you, you're in a, someone's mm. presence, but you feel like you're all by yourself. Jesus. Mm. I have Amen. people on my left, people on my right, people in the front, people on the back. Yes. I'm talking to people. I'm engaging, but I feel all by myself. Jesus. Because God says you're going through the process of death. I'm killing mm. some things because I'm going to resurrect. Thank you, Jesus. I have to take you through, through this phase because I have yes. to resurrect. And when you come out, you're going to be different. Yes. You're not going to think about life like you do now. You're not going to feel about life like you do now. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see it the way you see it now. Mm. There are some people that you're dealing with, you're not going to want, you're not going to treat them bad. That's but that's right. not going to be someone I bring into my circle because that's where right. I am right now, yeah. they don't fit anymore. That's right. Amen. Amen. Talking yes. about the resurrection. Yes. Yes. God says, you got to die. You have to die. Some, some people, some saints, God says you got to die some more. Yes. It's too much of you still living. Amen. Too much of you still walking around and breathing. You have to die some more. And Amen. I have the process for it. <laughs> come on, come Amen. on. Amen. I'm already, I have it set up. Come on, come on. <laughs> Amen. We're going to go back to Brother Job. Come on, come on. We're going to go back to Brother Job. Because yes. God says, Job, i got to take you through some things before I can bring you to the place I want you to stand in. Oh We've been studying Job. And the affliction of Job, and how Job has gone through so many times, so many different situations. Yes, Job experienced a form of yes, death mm. when Satan was allowed to touch Job. When God mm. removed the head of hedge of protection away from Job, mm. Satan was able to get his hands on Job. Yes. Couldn't get his hands on Job before, That's but right. Satan was able to get his hands on Job. When Satan got his hands on Job, Job he, he tried Job. Mm. Jesus. God says, do what you want, but don't kill him. He couldn't kill the physical body, but Satan says, I can't kill his flesh, but I'm going to kill everything else around him. I'm going to make him wish he was dead. Mm. Jesus. God says, I have to keep the physical body alive, but I'm going to hit him so hard, he's going to wish for death. Job died in his relationships. If you read, I don't have time to stand here and read all the chapters of Job, but read what Job said. There, were, there was a time when Job says, I, I'm all by myself. I don't feel anybody around me. I'm all by myself. Job died in the sense that he saw his ten children. He didn't see them, but he heard that they were killed. That's a form of death. Sometimes when you go through a devastating situation, so I've heard people say this, when that person died, something in me died also. Yes. 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 When I went through this situation, something in me died. Jesus. Job experienced a form of death as he heard about his servants being killed, all of his servants. As he heard about all of his livestock being killed, he went through a form of death. Job went through a form of death in his physical body. Satan was able to touch Job's physical body, and Job's body, we said, was racked with pains. Job was covered with sores from yes. the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. He experienced death in his physical body. And it happens like that sometimes. Sometimes God will allow us to go through a form of death in our circumstances. He allow us to go through a form of death in our situations. But God says, don't fret. How are you dying? Are you dying in faith? Are you dying believing in me? Are you dying trusting me? When I take you through your form of death, do you still hold on to me? Am I still your heart? Because if you die in faith, you resurrect in faith. If you die in faith, you resurrect a new man. Not just a man, but a new man. If you die in faith, you resurrect with new power, authority, and ability. Die in faith. Yes, yes. Don't fret the death. Jesus. Don't worry over the death. Sometimes you're going to see certain things happen in your household, in Jesus. your family. Because God says, I'm taking you through a form of death. Jesus. You're going to see Job, Job heard all ten children die the same day. Jesus. We don't want our kids to be sad. No. Let them come on, die. Come on, come on. Jesus. We worry when they're in a situation. Yeah, but God like, says, you're going to see this. You're going to experience this form of death, but God says, I'm going to bring you to life. Jesus. And in order yes. to do that, I have to take you through this stage of yes. death. Yes. yes. I have to kill your hope. Jesus. Not that there's no more hope, but it, it appears to be no more hope. I have to kill your expectation. Yes. Jesus. I have to kill what you were standing on and dreaming about. I have to make you feel like there's no one else I can turn to. Because God says, that's where I want you right now. I'm calling out for help, but there's no help. Where is everybody? Have you left me? But God said, that's where, I, that's where Job was. Yes. Job cried out for help. There was nobody, not even God himself. God hid himself from Job during his season of affliction because God said,
says, Job, if I pull you out now, you're not dead. You got to die, Job. Mm. That's right. You have to die. I can't pull you. I can't answer that prayer right now. I can't make a way out of no way right now. I can't do it for you right now, Job. I see your struggles. I see what you're going through. I hear every cry. I see every tear. I know the pain, but I can't touch you. Yes, yes. Jesus Christ. Because you have to die. Jesus. In order to resurrect. Yes, yes. Jesus. Job saw death in his position in the community. Job was, he was well known and well respected. But back with Satan's ability to touch Job, he lost his position in the community. Job even said, the young people don't even honor me anymore. Come on! <laughs> they talk against me and talk yes. about me. Yes. He died. Satan killed him. And he says, I can't touch the body, but I'll kill everything I can. Wow. Yes. He will experience death in every aspect Jesus. of his life. And that's what Satan did. Jesus. And God allowed it. Jesus. God allowed it. Jesus. And we, 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 the last time I was before you, we talked about the friends. Can he use you? Mm -hmm. The friends came and they hit Job just as hard as Satan was hitting him. Yes. Yes. They yes. accused Job. They made Job feel like God is not on your side. Job, you are a sinner. Job, the testimony you've been saying about yourself, you've been lying. Mm -hmm. Job, you're a liar. Jesus. Job, God is coming against you because of your sin. He was already wrestling with his own hurt Jesus. because of his suffering. But we talked about how the friends came. So Job says, where can I turn? Jesus. But I'm here to tell you, you may have to experience a traumatic situation, but die right. Yes. yes. Die right. What do yes. I mean by die right? Die with Christ in your heart. Die with faith. I don't care. Sometimes you might be praying and it's like, like Job, God does not hear the prayer. You're going to feel that. God is not answering my prayer. I've been praying. I was taught and I was I was raised to pray. I was raised when this happens, pray. Yes. And I've been doing it. I was raised to anoint. I'm praying. I'm anointing. But no change. God says, you know, I'm in this thing. No matter what you're going through right now, I'm in it. Trust me. Keep dying. And God says, you need to die a little bit more. Mm. Whatever I'm laying on you right now, you can take it. Jesus. I know it's in you to take it because I put it in you. That's right. And what I put in you, I'm waiting for it to come out. Yes. This situation is going to bring it out. Yes. This hardship is going to bring it out. Jesus. This trouble is going to bring it out. Yes. This hurt is going to bring it out. This sorrow is going to bring it out. Jesus. This pain is going to bring it out. God said it's in you. I put it in you. When you didn't even know it was in you, when you were nestling in your mother's womb, I was in there knitting some things together. Yeah, yeah. And I was putting something in you that I, I needed for you to do for me. You didn't know about it. As you grew in life, went about your little elementary years and your middle school years and your high school years, went on to college. Oh, we married, raised families. And God says, I know what I put in you and I'm waiting to pull it out. Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. But you must die. Jesus. Amen. Amen. You must Amen. die. Amen. Yes. So Job, um, in his affliction, and as we read the words of Job, Job suffered mental anguish. Job suffered physical anguish. We talked a little bit about how Satan was able to touch Job's physical body. And he had the sore bulls all over his body. He was racked with pain. He would sit in the ashes and just scrape his body. And sometimes when Satan began to attack like that, when he began to hit the physical, when he began to go around and began to hit your circumstances, Job lost his income. If we could put it in today's time, Job lost his job. Yes. <laughs> Job lost a lot. Job lost. Every day was something else that Job was losing. The scriptures don't go into it, but Job suffered mental anguish because there's no way you can look at all of the loss. Mm -hmm. You look at death. Mm -hmm. It does something to you. We're human. Yeah. <laughs> it yes. does something to you when you begin to lose. Mm -hmm. It does something to you when, when your life it's turned upside down yeah, and all you see yes. is hardship and pain and sorrow. It does something to the mental part of you. Adversity, yes. It causes stress. It causes anguish. And as you read Job, he was speaking out of his anguish. Yes. Job was speaking out of his stress. Looking at mental anguish, they said mental anguish is, is suffering. Hmm. And in mental anguish, you can be depressed. It can cause depression. Yes. He could have become depressed. Yes, yes. He could have become 
anxious, this mental anguish. He could have experienced, and, and I'm not saying could have, because in some of the passages you can see this unfolding. If you read what Job says, you see depression. Yes. <laughs> it, uh, when somebody is depressed, they've lost something usually, or they've been hurt a certain way, mm -hmm. and there's a sadness. That's what depression is all about. Yes. There's a unnatural, unusual, heavy sadness mm -hmm. as a result of loss. And we know that Job lost a lot. Yes, he did. And when and that, that demon of depression could have attacked Job, because we're talking about Satan having the hand to afflict. I'm talking yes. about Job's death. This is Job's death. That demon of depression was able to attack Job and talk to Job on a daily basis. Why do you want to live? What's the purpose of your life? Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about you. You can't do anything right. Everything you touch goes wrong. Jesus. Jesus. Causing depression, causing sadness, talking about his death, but God allowed this man to go through this. Mental anguish, Satan talking to the mind. Mm. Why are you keep standing? What is there to stand for? Nobody cares about you anymore. Mm. Nobody respects you anymore. Jesus. They're not paying attention to you. They're not listening to you. Jesus. And it yeah. drives yeah. you to a state of depression, heavy sadness. Mental anguish can also make us full of grief, deep sorrow, mm. grieving. Death can make us grieve. Yeah. It's a process. It's a process. It can make us ask God, why, God, mm. why? Why did you allow this to happen? I pray that they live. Yeah. I pray that they live. I stood on faith that you would heal. I anointed. I prayed. I read your word, mm. but God, they yeah. died. Yeah. yeah. And God said, sometimes their death is going to be your resurrection. Mm. Wow. Jesus. You know about it. Yeah. Their death is going to be your resurrection. Mm. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Mental anguish can cause distress. Mental anguish can make us feel hopeless. Mental anguish can cause a person to go into spells of anger. Mm. Don't know why I'm angry. All of a sudden, a spirit of anger comes upon you. Just mm. angry at the world. Mm. All of these things Joel could have been feeling. Sometimes people who are suffering mental anguish just start crying for no reason. Jesus. Just start crying. Mm. Uncontrollable crying. causes us to change our diet. Either we'll start eating more or stop eating. Yeah. 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 Don't eat anymore like you should. Going through a situation, don't realize it's stress. Mm -hmm. Stress can make you overeat and it yeah. can make you undereat. Under and stress, you're, you're still smiling and going forth, but you're stressed. Mm -hmm. And you're depressed. Jesus. Just what Job could have been experiencing. His, mm -hmm. his death. His death. One thing that mental anguish was doing is make you avoid people. Yes. Make you pull yourself in. Yes. Because Satan, when, when Satan, Satan had Job, remember this, God opened the door for Satan to have Job and for Satan to begin to talk to Job. And what Satan wants is to box Job in and that he's going to be the only voice that Job hears. That's yes. what he wants. Yes. I don't want you to hear God. I don't want you to hear people. I don't want you to feel loved. I don't want you to feel compassion from anybody. I just want you to hear what I'm feeding you. Nobody cares. There's no reason for hope. There's no reason for your life anymore. There's no reason for what you're doing right now. Give up right now. Give up. This situation is too hard. This situation is too hard. Everywhere I turn, there's a situation that I'm standing and trusting God for, but I see no change. My family is going through this. My job is going through this. On my job, in my home, I see no change. Mm -hmm. And it stresses. Jesus. This is where Job was. Part of his death, we read part of his death in previous lessons, but this lesson is dealing with the mental anguish. Yes. When you begin to read what Job says, he was speaking from his mental anguish. And I'm here to tell mm -hmm. you, that doesn't mean that that's where you are. You can speak from your mental anguish, but it does not mean that your mental anguish has taken you over. Mm -hmm. This is just what I'm feeling. But this is not what I have become. Jesus. I'm just voicing what I'm feeling right now. What I'm feeling right now is uh, depression. Mm -hmm. What I'm feeling right now is Jesus. anger at my mm -hmm. situation. What I'm feeling right mm -hmm. now is hurt. But I'm not there. Mm -hmm. That's not 
defining me, but in my human body Jesus. is what I'm feeling. But what Satan wants is for that to start defining me. Jesus. Uh -huh. Yes. He wants to put it in my head. All of these negative thoughts and negative feelings. This is where Job was. He was feeling this, and then his friends came and began to say some things that we've already discussed. I won't go back to what they said. Yes. But he was already feeling this thing yes. about his situation. Yes. Because he says, now why has God left me? Why is God not talking to me? Why is God not protecting me? We said before, Job was a priest of his house. He prayed for everybody. He offered sacrifices for everybody, and God kept and protected. But right now, I see no protection from God. My children are dead. My servants are dead. My livestock are dead. My body is, he said one time, is racked with worms and loathsome. He had become loathsome looking because of the affliction of his physical body. And there's nobody to help me. Jesus. And then Satan was talking to Job. Job began to speak. I want to turn to Job chapter 3 verse 1. Job began to speak out of his mental anguish. Job began to speak out of his mental anguish. Sometimes mental anguish makes you tired and sleep. You just sleep all the time. You just, I'm just so tired. And it's, it's my, sleep is my way of relieving myself. Yes, yes. But Job began to speak. He spoke out of his mental anguish. But his, his, his state of mental anguish had not become him. It didn't define him. And that's why I say it's important. How, do you, how are you going to die? You're going to die. God, is going, God says, I need to take you through death, a situation, not the physical death right now, but a situation. I need to take you through a, a season of affliction. I need to take you for, through a season of death. But how will you die? Will you die in faith? Because that will determine your resurrection. So Job chapter 3, verse 1. After Job's friends arrived, and they sat for seven days, and the, the scripture says that Job's um, appearance, his, the friends could feel Job's grief, and as they looked upon his appearance, and they felt his grief, they felt his heaviness, they probably felt his sadness and his depression, they felt that, and they couldn't speak for seven days, they just sat, and they looked at Job, and Job looked at them, but nobody could speak for seven days, and Job was the first to break the silence, and this is what Job said when he broke the silence. This is a man that loved God. This is a man that believed in God. This is a man that trusted God with his life. He, he hasn't turned from God, but his situation, his mental anguish, his physical anguish has caused him to speak in this manner, but this is not defining Job. Mm -hmm. Job says in chapter 3, verse 1, After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born. In the night in which it was said, there is a man-child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Job says, I, I want that day wiped off the calendar. I don't want anybody to recognize the day that I was. This is how hard this situation is hitting me. This is how hard the state that I am in right now is hard. It's hard. It's troublesome. It's weighing me down. And right now, I don't want to live another day. And not only did I not want to live another day, it would be enough that he, he just said, God, kill me. But he says, wipe it off the calendar. I don't want the day to exist again that I even came into the world. He's speaking out of mental anguish. He's speaking out of his frustration. And I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard some say that he could have been born in February. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Uh, yeah, that, that, that and we only have 28 days in February. And it's a possibility. I don't know. Uh, not touching it. Uh -uh. He could have been around the 29th. Could have, yeah. Because if it was the 30th, the 29th would have still been here. But what, what I like about God, and I, I spoke about this when I spoke about seasons change. Mm -hmm. And I said that the earth rotates around yes. the sun and it takes 365 days for that to happen. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's, and that's a year, mm -hmm. and but it takes 365 and one quarter day yeah. for the earth to rotate around the sun. Mm -hmm. And to make up that, quarter. every time it does that one quarter day, then a half a day, then a third of a day, it takes four rotations, mm -hmm. and every four years we have a 29th mm -hmm. yeah. of February. Yeah. God says, I know what you asked for, but I know you don't need it. Come on! <laughs> so I'm going to give it back to you. Mm. Come on! 
So every four years they call it leap year. That's what they call it. And we have a 29th, if that's the case. If it's yes. so. Yeah. God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. And God knows what he's doing. What he's doing. And God says, I'll, sometimes I'll give you what you ask for, but even in that, my hand is still in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to blot it out, Joe. I know why you're asking me to blot it out. Because of your hurt, your pain, your sorrow, your frustration. But God, I'm, God says, I'm going to give you your day, Job. And you're going to understand it when you resurrect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll understand it when you resurrect. Mm -hmm. So, Job, that's his suffering. That's his suffering. Mm -hmm. Job, I want to look at Job chapter 7, verse 13. I said sometimes that we try to, a person who's going through mental anguish, they try to find sleep. They, 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 they try to get rest from their mental state by sleeping, mm -hmm. trying to find peace in their sleep. And I just want to show Job's death and how Satan was able to attack Job. Chapter 7, verse 13. Job chapter 7, verse 13. He says, when I say my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaint, verse 14. Then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifies me with night visions. He said, I try to find peace and sleep. All I want to do is lay down. If I go to sleep, I won't think about my pain. He said, even when I lay down, I'm terrified. Nightmares. My dreams are I'm filled with nightmares and terror, mm. even in my visions when I'm awake. Mm. So there was no peace for Job. Satan was attacking Job. And yeah. I know we've gone through some situations, but my goodness, Satan was attacking Job. Mm -hmm. Job says, Satan told Job in so many words, in your rest, you won't find peace. Jesus. In your waking hours, you won't find peace. I'm talking about dying. Jesus. Yes. Dying. Yes. God says you have to go through this. You feel like you're alone, but you're mm -hmm. not alone. Mm -hmm. You feel like there's nowhere to turn, but you're not alone. And sometimes God is letting us, God wants us to understand, I'm there, I'm watching you, I'm keeping you. I just can't say anything because this is something you have to fight out of. Yes. You have to fight through it. You have to persevere through this stage in your life. And I'm going to bring you through it. You're going to see some troublesome situations. You're going to hear some negative things. And people know how to tell you negative things. They come ready to tell you something negative about your husband, <laughs> negative about your wife, Jesus. negative about your children, on the job, negative, negative, negative. And well, what are you gonna what are you gonna do when you hear that? Mm. Jesus. So I praise God. Mm -hmm. Jesus. I praise God. Yes. Because now you see what He's gonna bring me through. Mm. Yes. You're telling me what, what this is what's happening in my situation. And when the, when my resurrection comes, you're gonna see the power of God. Because now you know the depths of my troubles. Jesus. Oh my God. How do you die? How do you want to die? You want to go through something, but how do you want to die? Because God says the way you die is the way you're going to be resurrected. Yes. Mm. Verse 15. So that my soul chooseth strangling and death rather than my life. He says, I'm so terrified when I go to sleep. I'm terrified by my dreams. I have night terrors. I have nightmares. Terrible nightmares that wake me up in the middle of the night. I can't sleep at night. I'm tired during the day because I can't sleep at night. I'm afraid to lay down because I don't know what I'm going to dream. Jesus. But when I'm awake, I see visions that terrify me. Mm -hmm. So whether I'm awake or asleep, I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. And what I'm wishing for just choked me to death. Mm -hmm. Choked the life out of me. Yes. Jesus. I'm talking about dying Jesus. in your circumstance. Dying, and it gets, it gets rough. It gets rough. You say, God, why should I have to go through it? Can't you use me without taking me through this? Jesus. Just use me, Lord. Yeah. Fix me up and use me. Why do I have to go? But he says it's part of it. Can't be busy because I can't resurrect without death. My Lord. 16 says, Lo, I loathe it. I would not live always. Let me alone, for my days are vanity. And by reading this, you would say, but Job just gave up. No, he didn't. It sounds like Job is giving up. Job is speaking out of his trouble, but Job says, my trouble has not overcome me. I'm just telling you what I feel right now. Mm -hmm. But what he's going through, he's voicing what he feels. Yes. Job chapter 13, verse 15. Job chapter 13, verse 15. It's important to die right. It's important to die right. When you go through your moment of death, pain, sorrow, it's important to die right. It's important to suffer right. It's important yes, to suffer yes. with the right mindset, the right yes, heart set. Yes. Yes. 
Job chapter 13, verse 15. We get a glimpse into Job's integrity. He said a lot of things. If you read what Job says in his times of affliction, it sounds like Job just gave up on life, but no, Job didn't. He was just speaking out of his situation. Verse 15 says, though he slay me, and this is what Job believed. This is how Job died. This is the faith that Job died with. He says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. I don't care what he's going through. He said, though he slay me, though God slay me. And a lot of times if you begin to read these passages, Job believed that it was God doing it. Job said, God, you have done it. He didn't know the, the conversation that God had with Satan. He didn't know that God had turned him over to Satan. He didn't know that God said that he was a perfect man. He didn't know that God said he was an upright man that feared him and eschewed evil. He didn't know the testimony that God had about him. He only knew the suffering that he experienced. Yes. But Job began to say in the midst of his suffering, in the midst of him wishing for death, and this is how I know Job died right, in the midst of wishing for death, he says, though he slay me, though he's killing me, though he's destroying me, I'm going to keep trusting in him. I'm not going to change my opinion about God. Yes, I'm yes. going to stand on faith. I don't care what I go through, what I lose. I'm standing on faith. Yes. Even if it's the very God that I serve that's hitting me right now, I'm standing on faith. Though Amen. he slay me, yet will I trust him. I'm not turning from God. I'm not doubting God. I'm speaking out of my frustration, but I still believe God. Jesus. I believe God is a healer, even though my body is not healed. I believe God is a provider, even though I don't have what I need. I believe that God can do what he said he's going to do. Amen. Yes, yes. He says, but I will maintain my own ways before him. I'm not going to change my ways. I'm not going to let my, such, my situation cause me to go back into the world. I'm not going to let my pain, my sorrow, my headache cause me to speak out of my mouth things I shouldn't speak. I'm not going to let it change my conversation. I'm a child of God. I don't care what I go through. I'm a child of God. I don't care what I lose. I'm a child of God. I don't care the hardships I must face. I am a child of God. And I will be a child of God until God brings me out of this situation. That's what Job is saying. I'm not going to change my ways before him. 16, he says, he also shall be my salvation. I know I'm in a hard place right now, but he's, he's the one that's going to save me. Yes. I know he, he has turned his back on me. I know he's not answering my prayers, but my hope of salvation is in his hand. Yes, yes. 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 He is my salvation. Amen. For an hypocrite shall not be come before him. Yes. He says, I can't be a hypocrite. If I become a hypocrite, then I can't stand before yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. And Job had a hope in all that he was experiencing. This is his integrity. God said he was a man of integrity. This was Job's integrity. And God knew it was in him because God says, I know what's in you because I put it in you. Don't let your situation reshape what I've already done. Yes. I've done it. I've put it in you, but don't, don't let that situation reshape you. Because God says, I'm working on something. If you bear with me, I'm changing. Every day your mind is going through a transformation. If you bear with me, every day your heart is going through a transformation. If you bear with me. Mm. But don't let your hardships cause you to forget about me. Yes, don't, begin, yes. don't begin to speak out of your mouth words you should not speak. Jesus. Yeah, 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 God yeah. says your lips have been anointed. Yes. yes. Hey, don't call it. Don't I put my coals yeah, upon yeah. your mouth because you're going to speak my word one day. Don't let the wrong things start coming ah. out of your mouth because of your situation. On. Hold on. I'm don't coming. Like the song said, He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Right on time. Hold on. I'm coming. Hold yes. your tongue. Hold your peace. Yeah. I'm coming. Mm. Don't yeah. let your situation shape you. Yes. Don't speak it. Don't speak it. God Jesus. says, Resurrection day is coming, but yes. how will you die? I want to resurrect you unto life. So you must die with the right heart. Please die with the right heart. Go through. God says, I'm going to answer that prayer. I'm going to fix that situation. But just stay in it with hope and faith in me. Jesus. Like Job says, I know I'm going through right now, but God is my salvation. He's going to hear me one day. Yes. yes. Though he slay me, that's what Job said, yet will I trust him. Yes, yes. In Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. If we could turn there, please. Job began to speak of life's woes. Job was going through. Yeah. He began to speak of life's woes. Please read the book of Job. Just see the anguish that this man uh, was sent through. How Satan was able to take him down this particular path. And I won't read all of Job chapter 14, but Job uh, began to, in Job chapter 14, Job speaks of how short a man's life is um, in the physical body. 
he speaks of how short man's life is in the physical body. He began to say in verse 1 that man's life is but a few days. Compared to eternity, our life is but a few days. In verse 2, he compared our life to a flower that springs up and is soon cut down. But I want to go down to verse 7. In verse 7, Job contrasts the hope of life experienced in nature with man's hope of life after death. That's what he's doing. He's contrasting man's hope of life and with nature's hope of life. Contrast means to show the difference. Verse 7 says, for there is hope in a tree. <laughs> this, is how, this is how nature feels when it experiences death. Nature don't have the understanding that we have. There's a, a, a feeling that nature has about death. So he says, there's hope in a tree. If it is cut down, then it will sprout again. When a tree is cut down, we know what happens when a tree is cut off at the stump. It's going to die. But he says, when, when in nature, there is hope that it's going to sprout again. Even though it's been cut off, there's still a hope. And I'm talking about when you're brought to the stage of death, we have to have a hope. Even when it looks like it's the end, have a hope. Have an understanding, a desire. This is not my end. Jesus. This is not going to be my end. God has something for me to do, and he don't, this is not how it's going to end. But he says that there's, it, it, the, the tree is cut off, but there is hope. He says, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. So this is the hope. Verse 8, he says, through the root, he says, though the root thereof, thereof is waxed old in the earth. He says, the root has dried up, but that tree is still hoping for life. Yes, it is. <laughs> The root has dried up and died. There's no more life in that tree. But in nature, it hopes for life. He says, and the stalk thereof die in the ground. You see that? That's death. But even in that, that poor tree will still hope for life. And that tree can do it. Why can't I? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Verse 9, he says, yet through the scent of water, it will bud. Yes, it will. That tree does not even have to have water, right. but if it, it can just smell water, it yes. starts budding again. Mm. And it was dead. Mm. This is nature. Just the smell of it. That's hope. That's hope. And Job says that if a tree can hope like that, I'm in a dead situation. I don't see any life in what I'm going through and what I'm dealing with, but if a tree can hope for life when there is no need for it, yeah. oh, I can hope for life. Yes. When I have the Savior yeah. on my side, yes. I have the life giver on my side, yes. I have the resurrector on my side. Yes, yes. Thank you, God. And bring forth bows like a plant. He said, but man dieth and wasteth away, yet man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? Job is asking a question now. A tree has the hope of life, even when the root is died and the stump is dead, and even when there's no life in it, but at the scent of water, that tree will come back and begin to sprout and begin to bloom again. Skip down to verse 14. Skip down to verse 14. Job says, if a man dies, shall he live again? <laughs> Am I going to live again if I die? If this situation kills me, am I going to live again? Job was speaking of the physical death, but he didn't know God was working on a circumstantial yeah. death. And Job, you're going to live again in both areas. Oh, yes. And Job says, if I die, will I be like that tree? If I have hope, will I sprout again like that tree? What happens to me if I die? But then he goes on and says, all the days of my appointed time, will I wait? You see this? Till my change Come. I don't know what this situation is all about. I don't know why I'm going through this situation of death. I don't know why I'm suffering so. I feel like I have died. I've cried to God to kill me. But I, every day I wake up to see another day. I don't know what's happening, but my appointed time. Job understood I have an appointed time. God has me in this situation, but it's going to change one day. Mm -hmm. I'm going through right now, but I have an appointed time. Yes. Appointed means allotted. Mm -hmm. He says, all of my appointed time, I'm going to wait till my change comes. I'm, I'm not going to give up. Just yes. like that tree Amen. with that hope yes. by just a scent, it comes back. He says, I'm not giving up. Yes. I'm going to wait on God because I know he's coming. Yes. I cried, but he didn't come. I prayed, but he didn't come. Jesus. I labored, but he didn't come. I waited, but he didn't come. But I know right now with God, I have an appointed time. Job died in faith. Yes. Job died trusting God. Job died with the right mindset. Now, I'm not talking about a physical death, but in his circumstance. He died 
with the right heart set. He says, in this situation, it's getting hard. Yeah, I cried for the death of my physical body, but I didn't mean it, God. I told you to just kill me, but I'm just speaking out of my frustration. But my, my, my reality is, I'm waiting on you. Because I know a change is going to come. I know God is going to answer. I'm going to keep waiting on God. I'm not going to let this situation overtake me. I have faith in God. He's going to change my circumstances. Yes. How are you going to die? You're going to die one day in the physical, and you're going to die in your circumstances. But how will you die? Do you die in faith, trust in God? It, gets, it can get hard now. It can yes. get hard like Job. You're going to wish for death sometimes, but God said it's not time yet because I have a resurrection day planned for you. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're going to come through this situation. Ah, we're coming through. Yes. You're going to come through this situation. So Job has... In chapter 14, if a man dies, shall he live again? That was a question. That was a question. Am I going to be like that tree that yeah. can be revived by the scent of water? Am I going to live again? If I die, God, what's going to happen? If you kill me in this situation, what's going to happen to me? I've lost so much, God, and now all I have is my physical body that's beaten up. It's a struggle every day just to get up in this body. Yes, yes. Will I live again? He answered that question in chapter 19, if you can turn there with me. Go down to yeah. verse 25. He asked a question in verse 14. If I die, shall I live again? Verse 25, Job says, Well, I know that my Redeemer lives. I might, I'm speaking out of my frustration. I'm speaking out what I'm going through. But I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Savior lives. That's what Job is saying. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Job says, I have a Redeemer. And he's going to pull me out of this situation. Not only that, but he's going to vindicate me. Yes. He's going to turn my situation. I'm not giving up hope. I'm speaking as if I'm giving up hope. But this is part of Job's integrity. I'm not giving up hope because I know that I have a Savior. I know that I have a Redeemer. He's speaking of God in this situation. We speak of Christ in today's time. I know whatever I go through, I have a Savior in Christ Jesus. I have a Redeemer in Christ Jesus. My situation is going to change one day. Yes. Job went on to say, And though after my skin worms destroy this body, he said that his body was racked with pain and it was filled with worms. He said his body was loathsome. He said that my body can go to the grave. This, this situation that I'm in, it can take my body. It can do that. It can take this physical body. I, I have come to this resolve. It can take this physical body. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. He means apart from my flesh. In my flesh, he's speaking apart from my flesh. He says, in my resurrected body is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see God. Yes, yes. In spite of what I'm going through right now, I know I have a redeemer. I know I have a vindicator. And yes. I'll see God one day. Mm -hmm. This old body is going to go to the grave. Mm -hmm. He asked a question in chapter 14. If a man dies, shall he live again? He yes. answered his own question. He said, yes, I will live again. Yes. When this physical body died because it was being beat up so bad, he couldn't see life mm -hmm. in his situation anymore. He couldn't see life in his physical body anymore. And he says, when it goes to the grave, I have a redeemer, and I'm going to see him yes. face to face. Yes. So yes, there is life after the death of this physical body. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And saying you can do with my circumstance what you want is what Job is saying. You can do with this body what you want, but it's not the end of me. I shall live again. I will be resurrected. Yes. yes. It ain't over. It ain't over. Amen. It's not over. Thank you. It's not over. We know what Satan wanted. Satan wanted Job to curse God to curse yeah, and die. That's what, the, that's, what Job, that's what Satan said he was going to do. He will curse you to your face because he only served you for the blessings yes. and for the protection. Yes. It's your love. It's your love. But if you move the blessings and move the protection, he'll curse you to your face. But Job didn't know what he had in him. He had in him something that would not allow him to do that. He spoke about his death. He wished for death. He spoke of his calamity. But Job says, I can speak about it, but I know from the depths of my heart that I'm not turning from God. I know where my salvation is going to come from. I know my Redeemer living. And my hope is in God. Yes, Even yes. though he's the one slaying me, my hope is in God. He's going to resurrect this body of mine. Yeah. And he didn't know he was speaking something deeper that he's not going to just resurrect your body one day, Job. But he's going to resurrect your situation. Yes, yes. Job was feeling like he was going to die. He said, if I die in this state, that I, I'm going to see the face of God one day. How are you dying? Hmm. How are you? you dying? Do you die in faith and hope? Because that's going to determine your resurrection. In your physical body and in your life's circumstances, die in faith. 
Yes. Die believing God. It's going to get rough. I'm here to tell you. Your circumstance can get so rough, but don't give up. God is there. Job couldn't feel God. He couldn't see God, but God was there, and his hope was in the God he couldn't see. His hope was in the yes. God he couldn't feel. Mm -hmm. His hope was in the God that wouldn't answer a prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. His hope was in a God that he felt turn his back on him. His hope was in a God that afflicted him. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Hope. Keep hoping. Stand on faith. Because God says, I gotta, I have to take you through this situation, but I'm going to bring you forth. Amen. 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 Let's go to Job chapter 23. I'm just hitting certain areas to show Job's integrity. His death and his integrity. And how he died in faith. We'll start at verse 8. Job says, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. So now Job says, in his situation, can't find God. He can't find God before him. He can't find God behind him. He prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed, but God didn't answer. He couldn't feel God's presence in his situation. But that's not the time to give up because you don't feel God. Don't give up when you don't feel him. Don't give up when you don't see him. Don't give up when you don't hear him. Stand on faith. Verse 9 says, on the left where he doeth work, but I cannot behold him. Job said, I know he's working on the left. I know he's working. I know he's moving. I know he's fixing. I know he's preparing. He's on my left working on my situation, but I can't see him on my left either. But I know he's working. And that's how it has to be. I can't see God, but I know he's working. I can't hear God sometimes, but I know he's working. I can't feel God in my situation, but I know he's working. Yes, yes. I know he's moving. I know he's fixing. I know he's preparing. I don't have to see him. That's faith. Mm. My situation doesn't have to change, but I still know God is working. Mm. Every day I wake up, I see my problem, but I know God is working. Yes. I'm not turning from that. God is working. Yes, Lord. God is going to fix it. God is going to bring me out. I don't yes. care how long it I stay in it, but God is moving. Yes. I don't have to see him, Job said. I don't have to feel him in my presence to know he's working. How do I know he's working? Because I'm his child. Yes, yes. He said, I'll never leave you, and yes. I'll never forsake That's you. What he promised. You might not feel my presence sometimes, but don't give up on me. I'm working. Yes. But sometimes I have to stand back and let you feel like you're all by yourself, but you're not. He says, you're never alone. You're never alone. But it's for your growth. It's for your resurrection. So he says, on my left is where he is working, but even on my left I can't see him. Oh Job says, he hideth himself on the right that I cannot see him. He's hidden himself from me. Jesus. He won't hear a prayer. He won't hear a cry. He won't hear a request. God has hidden himself from me, but in that I know he's working. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 10, but he knoweth the way that I take. Yes, I can't see him, but he see me. Yes. I can't feel him, yes. but he know me. Yes. I can't hear from God, but he's hearing me. Yes. Yes. When I, just because you can't hear don't mean the line has been broken. God is knowing. He knows what you're going through. Yes. He sees your calamity. He's hearing the prayer request. But God said, this is your, your season of affliction. Yes. This is your time of death. And you have to go through it. And you Thank have to you feel Lord. like you're all alone. But I see you. Thank you Lord. I hear you. I know, I know every step you're taking. Yes. I know yes. every move you make. I know Jesus. the thoughts of your mind. I know the thoughts of your heart. Yes. I'm right here. Jesus. That's, that's, that's what's keeping Job. He said, I can't feel him, I can't see him, but I know he see me. Yes. And that's a promise. That's a promise. Thank you, Lord. I don't have to see him all the time, but I know he see me. Yes. yes. He Thank sees you, me. Jesus. He 
He had something great for you. Yes. Yes. Say to his mindset, and she won't get it. He won't do it. He won't say it. He won't stand there. That's what Satan is saying. I'm going to keep putting it on him. Yes. He's going to crack after one. Be like Brother Jesus. Joe. Because Joe says, when well, he tried me, I'm going to come forth. I shall. Not I might. That's what I shall. Now that I think about it. But Joe says, I shall. Remember who Job is right now. Right now, he's in a state. His body is broken. His body is loathsome. His body is right with pain. Job has lost everything, even his name in the community. Satan has snatched everything he could from Job. But Job says, in the midst of all I'm going through, I'm coming forth as pure gold. I'm going to shine one day. That's what he decreed. Here go. I don't care how Satan is hitting me right now. I'm coming forth. I'm coming out of this situation. Yes. I'm, out. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on God. I'm not giving up on God. I'm coming forth. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. You get as bad as they want to get. I'm coming out. They can talk as crazy as they want to talk. I'm coming out. Yes. I'm coming out. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And I'm not just going to shine, but as pure gold. Yes. Pure gold. And in order to shine as pure gold, you have to be refined. Yes. You have to stay in the fire. Yes. You got to stay in the fire. You want to shine as pure gold. The refined is fire. Stay in the fire. Thank you, Jesus. Stay in the fire. Thank you, Jesus. Stay in the fire. Thank you, Jesus. Stay in the fire. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. How are you willing to die? Are you? How are you willing to die? Because it's going to determine your resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Verse 11, he says, my foot hath held his steps. I know I've gone through, but I'm standing. Yes. I'm standing on righteousness. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing on faith. I'm not yes. going to let my foot slip and take me in another direction. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to let my foot slip and take me back to what I used to be. Jesus. Faith so says he'll curse you to your face. That's, that's what he, that was, that was that's good. Good. That's Job said, I'm not going to do it. I won't do it. Thank you, God. I won't speak against God. Mm -mm. Help us, God. Help us. Thank you. Ooh. He says, his way have I kept and not declined. And all that Satan had done, this is his integrity, and all that Satan has done, he says, I haven't turned from God. I haven't turned from God. I've kept the path that God put me on. And all of my suffering and all of my trying, I haven't turned from God. Verse 12 says, neither have I gone back from the commandment of God. At, of his lips. Yes. For God said, I have done it. I have obeyed God. In my affliction, I've, I have continued to obey God. Yes. In my suffering, I have continued to obey God. Yes. In my circumstances, I still obey the commandments mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. He says, I have esteemed the words of God. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Uh -oh. That's how Job was able to do it. Yes. The words of God, Job took it, and just like Job wanted his next meal. That's how I want God's yes, word. Yes, yes, yes. That's why I was able to be kept. Yes. Because I sought after God's word before I was sick after my next meal. Come on. Uh oh. It was like my necessary food. God's word was my sustainer. Yes. God's word was my keeper. How are you willing to die? God's word was my help. God's word was my mindset. God's word kept me looking up and not down. God's word kept me because I, I made it my necessary food. I stood on the word of God. I ate the word of God. I slept with the word of God. I woke up with the word of God. In my affliction, I stood on the word of God. How are you willing to die? How are you dying? This is going to determine your resurrection. Die standing on the word of God. Don't let go of the word of God. Jesus. Don't Thank turn you, from the word of God. It's going to be your help in time of trouble. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Have a word that you can turn to when you go through your situation. Get that Bible and start reading the word. Yes, Jesus. Your situation won't change, but your mindset will. Yes, it will. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll give you strength to keep moving. It'll give you strength to stand. Like Job says, I'm not going to turn from God. I'm not going to turn from God. Thank you, Lord. Help us. Thank you, Amen. 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 I'm not going to turn from God. Thank you, Lord. Job 27. Thank you, God. Job 27, we'll start at verse 2. Mm. As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment, and the Almighty, who hath vexed my soul, all the while my breath is in me, 
and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. And I want to pause there real quick. As Job is beginning to speak in this passage, he's still speaking about God being the one to vex him. But Job acknowledges something that's very important. Job says, the breath in me, that's God's breath. Yes. <laughs> that spirit of life in me, that's God's. That's right, Jesus. I'm afflicted, but God is keeping me alive. That's it. I'm going through struggles, but I know who's keeping me. In my, it's God. Jesus. Jesus. God is keeping me. Yes. Every day that I wake up, I may, may wake up to terror, mm. terrors and, 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 and fright and fear, but God's breath is still in me. Yes. That means something. Yes. I can't turn from God if his breath is in me. Jesus. I can't give up on God if it's his breath keeping me. Jesus. His breath is sustaining me through my situation. Mm. Is his spirit is in my nostrils. Is, is God is keeping me alive. Yes. Yes. In the physical, and God is keeping me alive in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. Because the yeah. fact that Job is hoping, that was God doing that. God was giving him the ability to keep hoping. Yes. God was giving him the strength and the understanding to keep hoping. It wasn't Job. And Job is recognizing this. It's God that's keeping me. Yes. He's keeping me alive. He says, verse 4, my lips shall not speak wickedness nor my yeah. tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you. Till I die, I will not remove my integrity from me. Job says, I'm taking it to my grave. That's it. I'm trusting God to the grave. Yes, Lord. I'm going to hold on to faith until I get to the grave. I'm going to, I'm going to die. How are you willing to die? I'm going to die trusting God. I'm yes. going to die standing on the word of God. I'm going to die understanding God is my provider. God is my sustainer. If this, is, if this situation causes my death, I'm dying trusting God. Yes. Believing yes. God. He says, my righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. I'm mm. not turning from God's will. I'm going to die righteous. I'm going to die in favor with God. Yes. I'm going to die in relationship with God. He says, my heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. So God let Job speak. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. He let Job cry yes. out of his song. Yes, yes. He knew Job's situation. God didn't say a word. Mm -hmm. And I won't go into for time's sake what God finally said to Job. But please read what God said to Job. But in, in verse 38, chapter 38 rather, is when... God began to speak. And it seemed like the whole time Job was speaking and the whole time his friends were speaking, God didn't say a word. God seemed distant um, the whole time. God seemed silent the, uh, the entire time. It seemed like God just did not care about Job's situation. But God was there. And God saw everything that Job experienced. And when God finally answered, um, when God finally spoke, rather, he finally answered Job, he did not give Job a reason for his suffering. He never dealt with that. And when God finally answered Job, God revealed that he was sovereign. Mm. Sovereign means to hold the highest and ultimate authority. God wanted Job to see, I'm sovereign. Yes. Yeah. Job, in, in his death, Job had to understand that his, his state of Obedience does not necessarily keep God's hand off of his life. Yes. It doesn't keep heartache mm -hmm. off your life. It doesn't keep frustration off your life. Mm -hmm. God wanted Job to understand, I'm a sovereign God. And God also wanted Job to understand that he was omnipotent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God wanted Job to understand that I have unlimited power. Mm -hmm. I can do what I want to do with who I want to do it, how long I want mm -hmm. to do it, and no one can question me. That's right. That's God. Mm -hmm. And Job didn't know that about God. He loved God. Yes. His desire yes. was to obey God, but there were some aspects of God that Job didn't understand. Yes. And Job had to come to life in certain areas of his relationship with God. Mm. There are certain places that we are with God in relationship that God said, you still don't understand me. No. You love me. Jesus. You serve me. You even teach my word. But there are certain aspects of me you haven't walked upon. Right. Mm. And your situation sometimes will allow you to do that. Jesus. Mm. So Job, uh, God asked him a the questions and then they the questions um they made the hairs on my arms stand up so 
when God began to ask those questions, I said, oh, I could see God's power. Yes. We began to ask those questions. I could see the authority of God. And I began to say, oh, my God, we can't question you. We can't question whatever you tell me to do. I can only say yes. You are sovereign. You are omnipotent. I can't question you, God, in my sufferings. I can't question why I'm going through. I can't question why I have to be the one to be hurt. And even some people have been abused as children. You say, well, that's not fair. Why, God? But God knows. Yes. He doesn't approve of everything that's happening, but there's things that God will allow. I'm not saying he allowed hurt and pain and sorrow and abuse, but God knows everything. And God says, I am God. Don't question why you have the life you have. Don't question why everybody else have and you don't have. Don't question why you grew up in the house you grew up in. Don't question, I'm God. I gave you the mother I wanted you to have. If she's a drunk, that's who I gave you. Whoa! I gave you the father I wanted you to have. He was absent. That's what I gave you. Don't question. I'm God. The reason. And what you need to do is learn your place in me. Yes. And it's going to cancel out that life you had to live. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. It doesn't matter what I didn't have as a child. But God says, who are you now? Yes. What did I put in you? Yes. What am I calling you to? Yes. Stop looking at what you didn't have. Stop looking at the hard life you had. Stop looking at what you had to go through. Who are you now? Jesus. And I'm calling you to that place. Yes. That's the place where I want yes. you to stand. Yes. That's the place you're working from. Yes. Your life had a reason. You don't understand it. And that's what Job had to come to that conclusion. I don't understand why I lost everything. I don't understand why I had to be hurt in such a manner. I don't understand, but God had to show Job. He never answered Job's questions, but he just showed Job his sovereign authority. Jesus. And when you begin to see God as sovereign, you stop asking questions. And you, you come to the resolve, you're God. No way. No way. And God says, Job, what you need to do is let me be God. Yes. That's what this is yes, all about. Yes. Job, let me be God. With all those questions, he says, let me govern the world that I created. Jesus. Let mm -hmm. me do with the world that I created. Mm -hmm. Even when it comes to injustice, some people get off and we say, God, that wasn't fair. God mm -hmm. says, I, I, I can see deeper than you. Mm -hmm. I know the whole picture. You only see part of it. But I'm a God that sits high and look low. I see the entire picture. I see the heart. I know why they did it. And I can go back into the depths of their lives. And you can't do that because mm. being that I am God, I can go deeper into the situation. I don't care how much you've studied and learned what degree you have. I can go deeper into the situation than your mind will ever take you. Mm. I am unlimited. Your mind is limited. Yes. yes. Job, had, that was his resurrection. He had to learn that. But God asked Job some serious questions. Yes, and the yes. thing about this is Job couldn't answer one of them. Not one. one. All together, he asked Job 83 questions. Oh, and Job couldn't say yes to one, of them. to one of them. And Job realized Job's resurrection. Job 42 started verse 1. Job realized the sovereignty of God. Job realized who God was as compared to who he was. Job, Job humbled himself before God. Job saw the unlimited wisdom of God, and then he unlimited wisdom of God and the limitations that were upon himself. Yes. And, and, and when God asked Job these questions, even though Job couldn't answer the questions, but those questions altered Job's understanding. Yes. 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 They were very beneficial. Even though he couldn't answer yes to them, they altered his understanding about himself, his understanding about God, and his understanding about God's working in his life, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to his suffering. Mm -hmm. And he was willing to say, yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholding from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? He says, I, I, I didn't have the understanding that I thought I had. Because I love God, I skewed evil. Um, I was perfect. I was upright. God had put a hedge around me. God had protected me. I thought I was somewhere, but I was not there. God allowed me to go through this situation to prove where I really was, and now I am wiser for it. This is his resurrection. I am wiser for it. I know I'm not as smart as I thought I was. I'm not as wise as I thought I was. I don't have the knowledge I thought I had. This is Job's resurrection. Most importantly, understand that, God, you are God. Yes, yes. And if you call me to suffer, I must suffer. If you cause me to lose everything, I must lose it. I don't question why, God. He 
says, therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. I spoke about something I couldn't understand. It just wasn't in me to understand. Being a man, I can never understand the ways of God. It's too mighty, too wonderful, too mighty for me to understand. I was trying to stand in a place that I didn't have the credentials to stand in. Job's resurrection. Verse 4. He says, Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Oh my Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. He says, I've heard, I've lived by what I heard. When I was submitting to you, it's because I, I learned to do that. I heard about you being God. I heard and I submitted to what I heard, but I didn't know you. Yes. Part of Job's death was to learn who God was. Mm. God says, you're serving me, but you still don't know me. Mm. Mm. Jesus. So Job says, after this situation, but the suffering coupled with God's questions brought Job to an understanding of God that he didn't have before, and when he was brought to the understanding, he says, I abhor myself. I repent. And that's what happens when God brings us to the revelation of who we really are. We will repent before God. He says, yes. God, I'm sorry yes. for questioning the way I, I grew up. Mm -hmm. God, I'm sorry for the life that you questioning, the mm -hmm. life that you gave me. Mm -hmm. God, I'm sorry for questioning my suffering and my afflictions. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for wishing, God, that you hadn't done these things to me. But Because now I understand mm -hmm. in your sovereign manner of dealing with me, you are pulling me to a certain place. Mm -hmm. yes. I have a knowledge I didn't have before. If I didn't go through that situation, I wouldn't have this understanding. Right. This is his resurrection. That's he right. was brought to a knowledge of God that he didn't have before. Now my serving you is not going to be just about what I've learned, but now I know you. Yes, yes. I'm serving you from a different place now, God. And now because of this new place I'm serving you from, I can wholeheartedly submit to your will. Thank you, Jesus. I was doing good before, but it wasn't. <laughs> yes. It's a big difference now. I said, how, how are you willing to die? Because God has a day of resurrection. Yes. And that re when, when, when that day of resurrection comes, you don't go back. Death is irreversible. You don't yes. go back to that. It's a new way of seeing and living with God. Yes. It's a new way of understanding God. It's a new way of being in a relationship with God. And God said, I had to bring you to that understanding. Yes. So he abhorred himself. He repented. Verse 10. Go down to verse 10. Job's resurrection. He had a new awareness of himself and a new awareness of God. Sometimes in self, I, we, can, we can begin to think because of my position in the ministry that I have arrived in a certain place. Yes, yes. But God says, I'm still God. Yes. You still fall under my rule yes, Lord, yes. and my authority. Yes. And sometimes situations help us to remember that. Yes, yes. yes. Verse 10 says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. Yes. Before. Come on, come on, come on. So Job had to first pray for those friends who had spoken uh -huh. against him. Uh -huh. He had to pray for uh -huh. Eliphaz and, uh, and, and Bill Dad. He had to pray and so far. He had to pray for them. Oh, yes, he did. Because Job had to get it out of his heart. Yes. Job said, I know they hurt you. What they said about you will hurt you. Yes. And I don't want you to harbor ill will because we're talking about a resurrection. That's right. And in the resurrection, you can't go back to the old ways of feeling. You can't go back to the old ways of dealing. So those three friends that kind of hurt you when you were in your yes, state, yes. I need you to pray for them. That's going to release you. That's Job right. had to experience a release. So by him praying for his friends, he obtained a release that he needed. Job needed a release mm. in the natural and in the spiritual. Just like his calamity came immediately. We read that previously, how in one day, yes, Yes. All his children were killed in one day. Mm -hmm. He lost all of his service in one day. Mm -hmm. he, he lost all of his livestock. So just like his calamity came in an immediate process, his restoration came Amen. immediately. Verse 11. Then came there unto him all his brethren, 
Remember Job says, I can't find nobody. My family has turned against me. My, children, my, my wife has turned against me. My own servants won't answer my request. God had everybody standing back. During this season of affliction, God didn't allow Job to find help on any hand because it was time for his affliction. Job was going through a process of dying. Yes, help yes. would have interfered with the process of dying. He had to die. So after his, his captivity was turned, verse 11 says, Then came there unto him all his brethren. So he had family. They just couldn't get to him. And all his sisters had family, just couldn't get to him. And all they that had been of his acquaintance, he had friends, but they couldn't get to him before and did eat bread with him in his house. So Job went back to the house. He, he was sitting in ashes before, sweating yes, his was. broken body. But now he's back in the house. I'm talking about when, the, when it's time for the change to take place, when it's time for your resurrection. And all those who were standing away from you couldn't get couldn't get a help and hear from nobody. They're all coming together now. And they bemoaned him and comforted him. Couldn't get that during his time of affliction because it was time for him to die. Yes. He had to die. And I'm not saying that God is not going to send you a helping hand. You're going to find peace, mm -hmm. but there are times when it's going to be hard. Your way is going to be made hard because you must die. And if you can find comfort in people during that time, you won't die like you should. Mm -hmm. But after the fact, they came and they bemoaned and they comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold. They began to bless Job. Yes, Job yes. lost everything during his season of affliction, but now Job is being blessed. All of his friends are giving him gold, they're giving him rings, they're giving him substance. Verse 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Talking about the resurrection now. His, his latter end was better than his beginning. Yes. What yes. he had before his season of affliction was good. But God says, I have something better for you. If you can go through the trouble, if you can go through the turmoil, if you can go through the affliction, I have something better for you. It says, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand sheep donkeys. So he was doubled. Verse 13, he also had seven sons and three daughters. God replaced the children that died. <laughs> they were replaced. God gave back, talking about his resurrection. Mm. And he called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Keziah, and the name of the third Karen Hapuk. And in all the land, there were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And we're talking about a man that's possibly in his 70s or older. Mm -hmm. It's said that he was about 70 when his season of affliction started. We don't know how long it lasted. It could have lasted for a few years. Mm -hmm. Don't know how long it lasted. But God blessed him with children again. Mm -hmm. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this, Job lived in 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. So Job lived 140 years after, after the after. captivity was returned. Mm, 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 mm. After his captivity was turned, rather, Job lived 140 years. And he saw four generations of children. Come on. He asked during the, 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 the time that he was suffering, am I going to die in this? If I die, will I live again? But God says, you're not going to die in it. I'm bringing to, you to a place of resurrection. So God blessed Job. God turned Job's captivity. And I want to look at what that verse said when it speaks about Job's captivity being turned. Um, what God did was God released Job. See, Job was in a season of affliction. And when his word says that his captivity was turned, God released Job from the heartache, the pain, the sorrow. And we can rejoice at that if you were experiencing a yes. hardship, yes. if you're going through a hard place in your life right now, if things are not looking good right now in your situation, and in your circumstance, you can stand on faith and trust God that he's going to turn that situation. Yes, and that means he's going to release you from that hardship. Mm -hmm. He's going to release you one day from that pain and that sorrow. You don't feel like it because you're going through it right now. And sometimes yes, somebody yes. might say, this is just my life. But God released Job from his affliction. 
and God brought Job's suffering to an end. And what God did was he set Job free to enjoy his life. Jesus. God Good says, hold Lord. on. I'm going to set you free to enjoy your life. Yes. One day, you're struggling right now. You're going through right now. You don't understand what, why you're going through. You don't understand what's happening to you. But I'm going to turn your captivity one day. If you die right, you will experience a resurrection. You don't, might not be enjoying life because of the troubles and the heavens. But God says, I'm going to turn this situation. Yes. And you're going to enjoy your life one day. You're going to smile where you used to cry and frown. He said, I'm going to give you peace when you had turmoil. Jesus. But God says, die right. Jesus. Die right so that I can raise you up right. Jesus. Amen. 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 The resurrection. Oh my God. The resurrection. Yeah. Amen.